Hi, good evening. I'm Shane Jones with the Sports News. The West Indies lost the first T20 against New Zealand and can now only salvage a draw in the two-match series. Chasing 190 for victory in Auckland today, the Windies were restricted to a paltry 108 for 8 in their 20 overs, with Andre Fletcher top scoring with 23. Nathan McCullum took 4 for 24. Now batting first, New Zealand posted 189 for 5 in their 20 overs. Brendan McCullum scored 60 not out and Luke Ronke an unbeaten 48 in an unbroken six-wicket stand of 85. Tino Best was the pick of the Windies bowlers with 3 for 40, while Nikita Miller took 2 for 26. Best believes the result would have been different had they been at full strength. I thought New Zealand um, played well, you know, all credit due to them. But I just think that, you know, it's a situation that we don't have our poor hitters at all. So, you know, in T20, you need your six hitters. And, you know, uh, we, did, we don't have any of our six hitters. So I think New Zealand played to their strength and they played well. All credit to them. I can tell you what, if, if our key players was here, are, are, are like Chris Gale, a, a, a Pollard, Darius Sammy, a Dwayne Smith, it would be a whole different ball game. Um, I think obviously in the Caribbean when we played them with our full strength team, um, they didn't turn up. But obviously we're in their backyard and we're kind of, we're kind of, you know, we're kind of on the strength. But the guys still show fight. You know, we still got a good team spread going, so we got to keep fighting. You know, one more game we could tie the series like we did in the the, the one day games. So the guys still very very positive. The second T20 is set for Wednesday at two in the morning Barbados time in Wellington. Meanwhile, Ravi Rampal, who missed today's game, won't play in the second T20 either. In fact, Rampal is on his way back to Trinidad and Tobago after failing to recover from a fractured thumb he sustained during a training session prior to the fourth one-day international. The pacer will now try to be ready for the Nagical Super 50. Well, earlier this week, the news broke that Kirk Edwards was sacked as Barbados cricket captain, being replaced by two fresh faces. The new captaincy duo spoke with me today publicly for the first time. What you are looking at here is the future of Barbados cricket. Craig Brathwit at 21 years old and Kevin Stout at 28. Now just days ago, these two were given the leadership baton by the Barbados Cricket Association, a move that might have shocked some. Craig says he didn't expect this day to come so quickly, but that he was always ready. You know, last year we won the tournament. So obviously coming back in to Tottenham Fort and we're looking to win again. Obviously the, the couple of players we had last year, I mean, they did quite well. So I mean, just keep working on it. Obviously young players coming through. So just let the build for the future as well. The man with the immediate pressure though is Kevin Stout, who will be in charge of the regional Super 50 squad with the competition starting on January 30th. Well, the first thing that came to mind is that, well, Kevin Stout by with this captain. And it has so many great several bar with this captain. It's a girl so everything beats. And you can list a whole heap of names that Captain Bar with us that, that were legends at the game and did really well. So me getting this opportunity, I mean I'm head over heels about it. Stout takes over from Kirk Edwards, and he says the former skipper has already extended congratulations. So what are his immediate plans? First I gotta get comfortable with all my players. I make sure everyone is there with me, backing me 100%, because I need the support from my team. And looking at my team, I, I, I think we have a very good team. I think the um, chairman selectors have selected a very good squad. And I don't think that anyone should stop this team from going forward and going to the finals and winning the tournament. So Kevin, what are your goals, first of all, as the captain of the team, and then as a player for personal performances? Well, obviously, my goal would love to win the tournament get all the younger players together, gelling together, doing well, because actually we need to get some more younger batsmen actually in the West Indies side. Um, as a team, well, just hope that the guys put the best foot forward and hope for the best when the competition starts. Let's wish these two talented young men the very best. Charity and professionalism, the inaugural Ivan Speed Ford Football Charity Shield will uphold those values when the 10-team two-zone tournament kicks off tomorrow at the Parkinson playing field. Notre Dame, Britain Cell, Rendezvous and Wales are among the teams participating. And organizers say pre-season tournaments are vital in a move towards professionalism in the sport. Whatever you got these pre-season tournaments, you know, it doesn't bring anybody in change as you like. But the trade, instead of watering down pre-season, what we're going to do is we're going to have five subs allow you to make five subs. No registration fee. 
you got your whole club you can use. Or as they say, it's preseason. Ain't about just winning the. Cause everybody can be winner. I know. So it ain't just about winning the charity shield. It's just to get Barbados football into a more professional setup. Preseason, everybody know the players because it's very hard to get guys to come out and train all the time. So with, with the preseason, it's a good, it's a good way mm -hmm. to get your club going. Well, admission is free, but spectators are encouraged to donate non-perishable items in support of a worthy cause in conjunction with the Hamilton Lashley Foundation. This tournament has been specifically designed as a charity shield to assist our unfortunate friends, brothers, sisters, relatives who have been affected by the devastating flood in um, in St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Dominica, and to a lesser extent, Grenada. We felt that it was a worthwhile effort, and Mr. Ford of himself really believed that we could use the concept of the charity shield. Well, matches will be played from tomorrow at 2 and 4 p.m. Back to cricket, persistent rain only allowed 15 overs in the G4S Masters cricket match at Dover today on the opening day of the competition. The home team took on Yui in a match already reduced to 30 overs aside because of wet conditions. Sean Green was there. After a late start due to rain, play finally got going around 1.30 p.m. However, what didn't get going? The innings of Roger Burrows bowl off the first legitimate ball of the bowling of Alan Young. Andrew Strawn steers this full toss down to third man to collect Yui's first boundary, and he's on his way. Peter Clark reached six before offering a simple return catch to Clyde Eswick, who floored it, and he's disappointed. But Clark was kind, because after that dropped catch, he offered a simple chance to another fielder off the very next ball to be snapped up at backward point. 19 for two. This brought in Fabric Green, who got off the mark in fine fashion, driving over a cover point and into the fence. Green skies this Don Marshall delivery to the fielder at long off, who settles and Green is grassed. Marshall wasn't so lucky against Strong. The batsman latched onto this delivery and deposited it into a neighboring house. And after that ball was returned, so too did the rain, a sharp shower, with the score at 74 for two after some 15 overs. Sean Green, CBC Sports.